Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we have a massive tropical update for first off our now named Tropical Storm Gonzalo, and then also our new Invest 91L, which is that Gulf Storm. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also ask that you do join our very exciting Discord servers and Facebook group down below in the pinned comment you can check that out now for today's comment of the day i want to know do you think 91l will become a tropical storm or do you think it won't be able to reach that status let me know in the comments down below and i'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video now let's get into this video and first things first we're taking a look at noah's cone forecast for tropical storm gonzalez and i know it says tropical depression 7 but they just haven't updated this map so it has been announced that it is a tropical storm now uh, now, as you can see, we are expecting it to generally head westward and remain a tropical storm until at least 2 a.m. on Monday. Now, they don't have this one crossing into hurricane territory. I certainly do. I'll be talking about all of that throughout this video. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at it on satellite imagery. And this storm is a very healthy storm. This storm is doing very well. I think they waited a way too long to name this one a tropical storm. I think it's pretty close to hurricane status already. It's probably a very strong tropical storm, and I expect updates throughout the day to reveal the fact that this one is much stronger than what they've been saying. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at Invest 91L, or I used to call it our Gulf Storm. Uh, we're just going to get get a brief update on that one. This one's looking a lot more intense than it was before. Get some of the model guidance, things like that. Very, very exciting stuff coming up. All right, now we're taking a look at, first things first, our two-day graphical tropical weather outlook. So this is going to be our 48-hour outlook. And we have a 40% chance of this one becoming a tropical storm within the next two days. Uh, so chances are pretty good. Uh, and as you can see, on the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook, it will be approaching Texas or hitting Texas, I think, within the next five days. And it has about a 50% chance of becoming a tropical storm. Very interesting there. Uh, I definitely agree with this outlook for this storm. Here's the low pressure center, and you can see it's right in the middle of the Gulf over some very warm water. So if it wants to develop, uh, it, it's, de it's certainly going to be able to here. Uh, it just really depends on how far it can develop before it reaches Texas. All right, now what we're going to do here is let's just take a look at our European model's probability of tropical depression. We take a look at this all the time. And they have a 90 to 100% chance of this one at least becoming a tropical depression before it hits Texas within the next one to four days. So the 23rd through the 26th. So this is a very high chance. And the European model, this one has been struggling quite a bit. It said that we have about a 0 to 10% chance of Tropical Storm Gonzalo becoming a tropical storm. Uh, so I'm not really buying the fact that it has these low values for that. So we're not going to be using that today uh, until I see some sort of increase in accuracy with that model. What we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at our spaghetti models for first off this Gulf system. And then we're going to move on and take a look at Tropical Storm Gonzalo. All right, now here we are taking a look at the spaghetti models for this storm. Uh, and first things first, we have basically the spread of all the different models. And as you can see, there's only one that shows it hitting Louisiana uh, in a very odd fashion. I doubt that's going to happen. Uh, but basically, almost every single model has this one hitting the Texas coast somewhere. It does actually spread out pretty far as far as the cone of where it could hit. Uh, you'll see that on our direct weather cone forecast here towards the end. Uh, really... I think we're going to see a Texas impact from this one, but we're going to see minimal impacts. It looks like about two to four inches of rain is possible, nothing major, and maximum this one will be a tropical storm by the time it hits, but most likely I would say probably a tropical depression or very weak tropical storm here. Now here's our GFS Ensemble model, spaghetti model, and this one has a pretty more specific location that it could hit, uh, but again, each member here has this one hitting Texas, uh, so we're almost certain that Texas is going to feel the full brunt of this one, which won't be too major, like I said before. Uh, and here's that Invest 91L model intensity guidance. And as you can see, uh, we see about 50% of the models show 
a tropical storm status and then 50% keep it below. There is one that takes it to category one status. I highly doubt that. You can see there's a sharp drop off at about 60 hours and that's about at land impact. So it might reach a tropical storm and then at impact it's going to dramatically weaken after that point. Uh, there's a pretty wide margin of how far this one could develop. Some of the models have a weakening and then some have us getting to a moderate tropical storm. Obviously, that's going to have major implications to the impacts we're going to feel. We will have also our direct weather uh, intensity forecast at the end of this video where we can give you guys our official thoughts for this one. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. And we're going to take a look at the model guidance for our tropical storm Gonzalo. Uh, in a similar fashion, we're going to take a look at some sea surface temperatures, the areas where this one is heading, and just take a look at why I think this one is going to develop very dramatically here soon. Now, I said it's going to dramatically uh, intensify soon, but it already has actually dramatically intensified as well. So I guess I should probably say, will it continue to dramatically intensify uh, here's the spaghetti models. As you can see, they're pretty specific with where they think it's going to head. It's going to go south of Haiti and Dominican Republic. There is a couple that show it hitting Dominican Republic and then possibly heading towards um, Cuba as well. Uh, but most of them keep it south of those areas. Obviously, if it was to hit land there, we would see it weaken quite a bit. It could strengthen after, but really that's kind of going to be the more weaker path. The stronger path would be if it heads south of all of these islands uh, where it can stay over these very, very warm waters. Let's go ahead and move on and take a look at the GFS ensemble model that actually has this one on average hitting Cuba and then potentially near Florida. Uh, but really most of these have it heading south of Cuba. There is a few that have it heading north of these areas as well and potentially impacting the southeast coast, including Florida. That would be quite interesting to see that type of a path. So that's definitely on the table at this point, not impossible. Here's our sea, sea surface temperatures. This is why this one's going to have such an easy time developing and why it has so far. I feel like nobody's taking this into account. We have temperatures. First off, I tweeted something that we have record breaking warm temperatures for most of these areas, but we are about uh, 1.2 to 2 degrees above average Celsius throughout all of the Southern Caribbean there, and even in our main development region to the east of our Virgin Islands there, uh, we're really, uh, this this storm is going to have just such an easy time developing here, guys. It's going to it's going to head towards some drier air, uh, but smaller storms like this tend to do a little bit better in drier air. I don't think that's going to dramatically weaken this storm by any means. I think we are going to at least remain a tropical storm until this one reaches the Southern Caribbean and through into the Gulf potentially as well, where we're going to have to see what this one can do. Here's the seven day change sea surface temperatures. And this one's even more telling. We've gone up by a degree or two for all of these orange areas here to the south of Cuba and Dominican Republic. So these areas are dramatically warming as this storm is heading towards it. It is ripe for development. And that's why I think this storm will have a very easy time developing. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the intensity guidance from the models for Gonzalo. Then I'm going to take a look at the total rainfall from our Gulf storm. And then we're going to get to our official direct weather cone and intensity guidance for both of these storms. And then we'll get into the comment of the day. So first things first, here is that model intensity guidance. And as you can see, it's kind of split down the middle. We have two groups of models. Some of them have it becoming a strong tropical storm, which again, I think this is underplaying it. I think we're probably a lot closer to about 50 knots right now. Uh, the NOAA has been saying we're under 45 knots, but really looking at satellite imagery, it's clear to see that this storm is a lot stronger than what they've been saying. I think they're trying to spare themselves from the embarrassment of getting this storm so incredibly wrong, uh, but I don't really know why. Uh, they, they've kind of been underestimating this storm the whole way through. Uh, here at Direct Weather, we've almost precisely, perfectly forecasted this one to this point at least. Hopefully I will continue that streak, obviously. Uh, but nevertheless, they have this one dramatically increasing in, in intensity. All of them do, uh, at least for the next 24 hours. And then it kind of levels off a little bit on all of the models, whether it's a category one, even a moderate tropical, or sorry, even a moderate category one by the time we're at about 48 hours out. So we could be looking at a stronger category one hurricane by the time we're at, I don't know, 8 p.m. tomorrow, uh, possibly category two in the next three days. These are all on the table. Also, it's possible that this one just remains a strong tropical storm throughout the entire thing. Again, we will have our intensity forecast for this storm later on where we'll be able to give our thoughts a little more clearly. Here's that rainfall forecast as of right now. 
for our Invest 91L. As you can see in the reds, that's where we're at anywhere from two to four inches of rain. In the golds, that's where we're at about four to six inches of rain. So you can see some areas in Texas and Louisiana uh, will probably be experiencing four inches plus from this one. Uh, could see some minor flooding, possibly some moderate flooding. Impacts aren't going to be too crazy from this one. Let's take a look at our cone forecast for Invest 91L. As you can see, we're pretty much 99% sure this one is going to hit Texas and then dissipate over Texas. It's at about 25.7 degrees north by 87.9 degrees west. It has 28 mile per hour winds. It has a 1,011 millibar low pressure center and it's moving northwest. Let's go ahead and look at that intensity forecast from direct weather for this one. We don't expect it to reach tropical storm status today, though at about 12 a.m., I would say about 10 p.m. to 12 a.m., it is slightly possible that we reach tro tropical storm status. I think it's more later in the day tomorrow where we see a more chance than not that this one reaches tropical storm status later in the evening tomorrow. Uh, and then by the time we reach day three, it's going to level out. And then later on the day, in day three, that's when we're going to start to see that one weaken. And by day four, it's going to be very probable that this one weakens to below tropical storm status or stays below tropical storm status as it reaches most likely Texas, like I said before. Now let's look at Tropical Storm Gonzalo. This is our cone forecast for the next seven days. This one's going to really pick up in speed eventually. As you can see, we've kept the, the slight possibility that this one goes north of Dominican Republic and Haiti and heads towards the Bahamas, but it's very likely that this one stays south of those areas and kind of heads towards the Gulf, possibly the Yucatan Peninsula as well. Uh, we're at about 9.9 .9 degrees north by 41.9 degrees west. We have 46 mile per hour winds, which again, I think is a little bit lower than what we're looking at. I would say we're a lot closer to 55 or 60 mile per hour winds, in my honest opinion. Uh, the low pressure center looks to be about 1,003 millibars. That's going to dramatically lower very quickly. Uh, we see the movement is west at 12 miles per hour. This one is very quickly moving towards the Southern Caribbean, where it is, again, going to interact with some dust, but I think that this one could dodge that completely. Uh, if not, it's going to put up a great fight against the dust, and I don't think it's going to completely dissipate the storm. So once it moves into the Gulf, it could re-intensify. We don't really know at this point. I'm going to be updating this one daily either way. Here's the intensity forecast from direct weather. Again, as you can see on my intensity forecast, we already have it at a moderate to strong tropical storm. Like I said, that's my opinion. Uh, so that's what we're going with. I think it's going to intensify dramatically throughout the day today, where by the time we're at tonight, it should be a very tro strong tropical storm. I would say there's about a 30% chance we reach category one status at some point tonight. Later in the day tomorrow, it's going to be more likely than not that we're at category one status. I think that there is a slight chance that we remain under category one status. As you can see, the red cone throughout the next seven days does stay below um, category one status there on the very lower end of that. That's a low probability, but again, it is possible by the time we reach day three, the, the possibility of category two status, uh, comes into play. And then by day four, there is a very slight chance that we reach category three status. But again, I think it's more likely than not that we reach category one status, maybe category two status. And then by the time we reach about day five, it starts to really uh, spread out in the possibility. We could see this one intensify if it dodges the dry air by then, um, and it could become a category three or four. Obviously, that's very far out, so the possibilities really start to uh, go crazy, but it also becomes possible that we see this one weaken significantly um, and become a weaker tropical storm, possibly even lower than tropical storm status if that dry air eats this one up, which is also on the table. But I think it's more likely than not that we remain a category one uh, hurricane, possibly stronger tropical storm as this one approaches the Gulf. Now for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think that 99L will, well, what was 99L, what's now tropical storm Gonzalo will hit the United States eventually? And Luca Z said, I think 99L will eventually affect the Gulf coast. And I really have a gut feeling that's going to happen too. Obviously there's a lot of things on the table and that's probably about 14, I would say 10 to 14 days away from when we're going to figure out if this one's going to impact the United States or not. But I have a gut feeling this one could potentially impact some of those regions. All right. Now, thank you so much for watching this very long video. Uh, I really appreciate all of you guys. Be sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media, and I will see you guys in the next video.